Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at the Lage Manufacturing Max 1115. Now actually we have two versions of this here today. We have an 1115 and we have an 11A1. 15. There is also a third pattern, which is the Max 1015. And the reason for all these different variations is that this is a replacement upper assembly for use on a registered M10, M11, or M11A1 machine pistol. So these started out as this, a thoroughly useless Mac 11 or Mac 11A1, in this case a Mac 11A1, a uh, little machine pistol, good for essentially nothing. Um, but these machine pistols were extremely inexpensive as far as registered full auto firearms in the United States go. And so there are a lot of them out there. There were a ton that were manufactured before the 1986 ban on transferable machine guns. And Lage Manufacturing is a company located out of Phoenix, Arizona, that has been building replacement uppers to turn those Mac 11s and Mac 10s and Mac 11A1s into actual practical usable firearms by converting them, first off, the 380 uh, 11A1s, converting them to 9mm, and then the 9mm versions, converting them to take uh, more useful magazines, things like Suomi drums that fit in front of the pistol grip, giving them longer barrels, really turning them from machine pistols into proper submachine guns. And Lage has been doing that for a long time, and frankly Lage is probably single-handedly responsible for more of the increase in value and price on Mac machine pistols than anyone else. Well, a couple of years ago uh, he actually put into production a 5.56 conversion for the Mac series of pistols, and that's what we have here. Now it's been a long, this video has been a long time coming because the version for the M11, or the M11-9, uh, came out a couple of years ago, um, ATF approved and all that. However, the two versions for the M10 and the M11A1 machine pistols, the M10 is in 45, the M11A1 is the little 380 machine pistol, those sat at ATF for something in excess of two years without getting an approval or disapproval. Um, before actually finally being approved at the very end of last year, of 2021. So uh, I had very excitedly gotten myself an M11A1 uh, when I first heard about this project, and it's been sitting essentially doing nothing for a couple of years waiting for ATF to approve the upper. Well, now that I have the upper, and I have a friend's other upper here, I want to show you how this works, and in, in addition to that, uh, well, how you can convert a 380 machine pistol into a 556 essentially automatic rifle slash light machine gun. But there are also two different internal mechanisms to these guns, and they're substantially different, and they represent a lot of really clever design work on the part of Richard Lage. So let's dig in and take a look at those. So once again, the critical element here is this lower assembly with the grip frame and the fire control group, and that is what in the United States is registered as a machine gun. This is the controlled part. The upper assembly here, this piece of square tubing with the barrel and the bolt, is irrelevant. That is just parts. And so what Lage does is keeps this lower assembly. Now this is an M11-9, uh, which is a longer receiver than the original, than the M11-A1s. Uh, but he keeps this and then has built this entire upper assembly to go on it. Now control wise uh, we have some pretty basic stuff going on. Uh, magazine release button here, this is a, a Stanag standard magazine well, so it will take all regular AR mags including things like uh, the Surefire quad stacks, and Beta C mags, and Magpul D60s. All of that fits and works just fine. It does actually have an ambidextrous magazine release in it. The safety and selector switch are carried over from the Mac lower. So in this case um, the owner of this one has a Lage safety and a Lage trigger shoe on here as well. Um, the safety is back to safe, forward to fire. And then the selector switch is over here on the left side, semi, and full, or in this case SMG. For the 5.56 upper the charging handle is non-reciprocating and set on the left side. And this fires from an open bolt. So in order to make it ready to fire, you're going to cock the thing back. And as you see the charging handle is spring-loaded, and when you pull the trigger the bolt's going to drop and fire. 
Now, this particular model is what's called the AR recoil system, in that it has an AR-15 spring and buffer in the stock. This is in fact an AR-15 stock, uh, with an adapter to fit the Mac lower. That's also why you hear it being kind of springy. Um, this one's a little... All that noise is coming out of the spring buffer back here. Now, the other version, as you can see, clearly does not have a spring and buffer in it because it's got a folding stock on it. This is the internal recoil mechanism. So Lage started by developing a version that used an AR-15 buffer and spring, and the problem with this was it requires you to drill a hole in the back of the Mac lower. That doesn't impact its legality, that doesn't impact its usability in its original form, but you have to have a guide rod uh, going through the back plate of the Mac. And there was a lot of pushback on that, and so he went further and developed the internal recoil mechanism that doesn't require that. So let's go ahead and take these apart, and I'll show you how the two different versions both work. So to take this apart you want to check the chamber of course, and then make sure that the bolt is forward, so that the recoil spring is not compressed. And then you just push out the pin, uh, holding... this is the original Mac pin. Now there's normally a second locking pin on this side, which I've left out just for the sake of simplicity on video. But pull that pin out. And then the lower just comes right off. So if we look right there, you can see the hole in the Mac backplate, and that little shiny bit is the front surface of the AR buffer. Up in front here, the fire control mechanism is all standard Mac. Uh, the sear here, this uh, owner has replaced with a Lage manufactured sear, which is far higher quality than the original sears. It's hardened, it's a, a highly recommended upgrade. Uh, Lage does a whole package of internal parts for these guns, um, and they're all really well worth having if you plan to shoot them. Next, we can pull the bolt mechanism out. So this is the Max 11 AR recoil system, and it is legitimately just an AR-15 bolt carrier assembly with this piece added to the inside. So this is giving it a little bit more weight, and then you've got a a guide down here that's going to let this bolt carrier run on the rails in the lage upper. And then it's got this long transfer bar coming out the back, and that is going to sit right there and push the recoil buffer in. The front end is a totally standard AR-15 bolt. Uh, this uses a standard AR pseudo gas impingement system. It is open bolt, but it is a locked breech system. So when you fire, the bolt is going to chamber around, close, and then the firing pin, having been modified from a, a simple hammer-fired AR firing pin, the, as soon as the bolt closes, the firing pin protrudes forward, and it fires. On the front end here, you can see a little screw. That is because uh, Lage uses an adjustable gas block on these guns. That allows you, the user, uh, to tune the gun to whatever specific ammunition that they want to use. It also allows you to tune the rate of fire. So um, these can fire anywhere from about 650 to about 900 rounds per minute, depending on the gas system, uh, the gas setting, the ammunition that you're using, and if you have the, uh, the AR-15 recoil mechanism system, you can change out things like spring and buffer weights and affect your rate of fire that way as well. So there's quite a lot of user configurability in this system. I can show you the markings here. It's a model Max 1115, because this is made for an M11. Um, caliber is 5.56. Lage manufacturing and the serial number for the upper assembly. The upper itself here is uh, a milled aluminum uh, block. There is a Picatinny rail running the length of the receiver for mounting whatever sort of optics you want. We have a case deflector here, prevents this from being a problem for left-handers. Of course the magazine well. And then this accepts standard AR-15 barrels, as well as standard AR-15 handguards. So, and of course you can see it in there, a standard AR-15 gas piston, or a gas tube. Um, in theory, gas piston systems for the AR will work here. The caveat is you have to make sure that they fit under your handguard. So that's something that Lage doesn't offer standard, and I don't have any experience trying it myself. So I can't comment on that beyond the fact that, in theory, it does work with these. But um, muzzle device out there also 
uh, replaceable with whatever you want. This one has a, a muzzle device to fit a suppressor. So that, like it's a fairly simple uh, upper receiver, but there was a lot of clever planning that went into it. Now let's take a look at the internal recoil mechanism that kind of takes this even one step farther. So of course there's no buffer tube in the back. What we have instead is a recoil spring that is com heavily compressed inside the receiver here. And one of Lage's really clever tricks is the system for being able to actually do that. So in order to take the gun apart, what I actually need to do is pull the bolt back, not quite all the way, but just until it lines up on the inside here with, all right, you can see that socket head screw in there. Right in front of it, right there, is a hole. And I need to lock the bolt, or the recoil system, there we go. Nope. There we go. All right. So that little tab is now locked into the bottom of the bolt carrier. This will make more sense when I pull this apart. What I have done at this point is remove spring tension from the bolt. I've locked the recoil spring inside the bolt carrier. So now I can go ahead and do the same disassembly which is to say popping out this locking pin. And I can pull the lower receiver off. And on this one, there is no hole in the back of the receiver. Again, all standard uh, internal parts. And now that is my bolt carrier and internal mechanism. So you can see the recoil spring back here all tightened up completely. Um, this is a newly manufactured component. This isn't an AR-15 uh, bolt carrier. It's of course designed very similarly. It uses the same internal piston design. Um, once again, you know, this is locked breech, open bolt. As soon as the, the bolt closes, the firing pin protrudes. It's still pseudo DI uh, powered. But you can see the difference there. This has, as the name implies, an internal recoil mechanism. Now in order to take this apart without that recoil spring flying across the room, uh, this is where some of Lage's really clever design work comes in. We can actually, well, there's a hole in the back there, and I can run a basic cleaning rod into the bolt and carrier. And he actually, the gun comes with a disassembly rod that does this same function, but a standard cleaning rod will work. This uh, lever arm you can see is slightly curved, that's intentional. And what this does is when you fully cock the action, once you put this back together, it's going to pop this hook down out of the bolt carrier and release the recoil spring to work. In order to disassemble it, what I have to do is hold it back and, and lock this in place. So with this cleaning rod, I can now, there we go, I can now, Oops. All right, it's a little tricky to get, um, a little easier to put it together. But the cleaning rod runs through this guide rod, buffer, and locking piece. So there's our recoil spring, which normally lives inside there. So I think designing this not only just to work originally as an open bolt 5.56 conversion of a machine pistol is really clever, but then being able to come up with a way to do it without any modification of the lower whatsoever, and having the system where you can actually re you can contain and lock the recoil spring assembly through the existing hole for the magazine in the grip of the original lower, that I think is really clever. All right, just for the sake of anyone who decides to do this themselves, let me show you the process for reassembling. And that, I'm just going to use this cleaning rod as a guide rod to prevent the recoil spring from kinking. And the easiest way to do this is to put the spring on a hard surface so that you can then pull this up, lock it in place like that. And then the rod can come out and now don't drop this or it'll go shooting across the room. So the standard version of 
the Max 1115 is this one here in front. It's got a 10 and a half inch barrel, it's got a basic aluminum handguard, and the only thing that's different about this one than the standard configuration, aside from the optic being on it, is the owner of this one has changed out the muzzle device to fit a suppressor that he has and likes. Mine is, uh, is a bit more of a custom job in that it has a 16 inch barrel and a different handguard on it. And we'll talk about mine in detail in a later video, but one of the nice things about uh, the Lage system is that it uses standard AR barrels and gas systems, and so you can change around this sort of configuration however you like. But just to be clear, the way that they ship from Lage is 10 and a half inch barrel, like that one in front. At any rate, um, I think it is extremely cool to be able to, to see the sort of engineering development that's been done um, essentially as a workaround to US law. Like these are totally legal, but in a similar way to how we see all sorts of unusual cartridge systems and revolver designs come about as a result of the Rollin White patent, we see a lot of interesting workarounds to make the best use of registered transferable machine guns that predate the 1986 ban because new ones can't be made today. And so that leads to things like the Stempel tube guns and the, uh, the panoply of Lage Mac conversions. Hopefully you guys thought this was pretty cool and interesting as well. Thanks for watching.